Aero Commander UMX Part 11 Flaps Mod, the world's longest video series. Just noticing a little tweak we got to do here. It's always scary to make these fine adjustments once you've already kind of got things what appear to be working. But if they were working so good, you probably wouldn't be making the adjustment, right? Ooh, that works. That works way better. But then it doesn't push it all the way down. Um, so... We're getting so close to getting done, and it's very exciting at the end of a long project, long, hard-fought project like this. And I'm so ready for this one to be done. Oops. So where we left off on the last video, we were just uh, situating the servo so we can get so we can get the linkages built. But I noticed a, a little issue here that we need to get resolved. And that's part of the issue with this whole project because of the complexity of the inboard outboard combination of flaps makes it a little bit tricky. I'm sure, there's probably some more experienced builders that could do this with less frustration. See what's happening guys is as it gets ready to close it's kind of kicking it off to the side there it's going down and then kicking it i don't like that i think i got an idea to fix it maybe Let's try that. What I did was the correct maneuver. I think I just got to do it back a little bit further. Which means I need it tipped way up to do it. Kind of force that down. Some of these fine-tuned things, guys, you you may do things a little different and not, not need to do this at all. Which would be pretty cool if you could get away without having these fine-tuned things. You pretty much, in my experience, always have to do to a certain extent on every plane. Especially if it's what I like to call a project plane. Which is a nice way of describing a hobby king plane. Because when you get it, it ain't going to work right. You'll have to do little things here and there to make it work properly. Or what you expect to be properly. And what a reasonable person would expect to be properly. That's pretty good action now. Still not quite exactly there. That's a little square movement action now. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. All right, so back to where we were when we left. We were just getting the tip of this control rod bent to be received into the, the servo here. I don't want to tell anybody their business, but it's always best if you can do this so that you can 
manipulate, modify it. Um, get it on and off, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, and then let's put that all the way back. Sorry about the autofocus, guys. Okay, so that's going to be our, our locked position. Okay. So now one thought I have is, where did those little things go? There they go. These little things do work nice because they give you a pivot point if you want to use it. That one's been trimmed. This one's just a factory one. Um, they do add a little bit of weight, but so you can you can make up for those just just not so perfect angles. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes it hurts. Um, the other thing is you can actually glue these on and make a place to retain. I don't know if we're going to need that on this plane. Because really what I'm looking at doing is basically taking in... You know what I have to do? I have to put a Z-bend in these so that I have some adjustability. I got to do it. I don't have a choice on this. Um, and the thing that kills me is like right now I'm looking at this thinking there ain't no way I'm going to do this with with just one control arm. I'm going to have to have a second control arm. Which means that I may need to actually put my bend way out here. I Make like a V out of it. A V for victory. Like the ASW28 that my friend crashed into a tree the other day. That shall remain unnamed. Oh, come on. Spin it. Oh, I know I'm having trouble. Because I don't have it in the middle position. I was like, why is this so much harder than the last time? It's because I'm not in the same position I was. Okay, so we got that out now. So what I'm saying is, if I fold this in a V then that will push both, but I just need to make sure I have an adjustment in there, okay? So we'll go a little bit longer than we need, and we're going to try this. This usually, what was that noise? Did you guys hear that? I swear something changed. Maybe I bumped something. I don't know. That was just weird. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make this a very tight bend. Oh, shoot, did I give myself enough length? Oh, yeah, plenty. Now, remember, we want to give ourselves only enough for the plastic thing. Which is going to be quite tricky, in fact. Because, really, we need something like that thick. That's about the right thickness at the tip there. So, now we can take and just really hold that tight. This little bin keeps these things from wanting to fold over on themselves. So these, I find myself using these all the time when I'm folding these things. And I just realized I didn't put my safety glasses on. Okay, so let's just cut this. We can always replace, I mean, we don't, who cares if you waste a little bit of your material. I mean, you don't want to do it all day long. You just spend a lot of money on material, but on stuff like this. Okay, so that discoloration is usually a bad sign, so try not to get it to the point where it's discolored like that. Okay, so I can't really put too much into this until I am able to get it on there. Now one thought I have is I may need to make an access to get a screwdriver in there so I can pull this on and off because I can't just keep depending on getting lucky to get that through. Or can I? I might be able to. Hmm, I don't know if I want another hole in there is the problem. I really don't want another hole in there. 
at least I could hide it in the window because it would be harder to see there. If I put it right here, it's probably not the end of the world. Ugh. I hate having holes in my planes that are unnecessary. Kind of like the one I did back here earlier today. Whatever. See, and then the problem is now I'm going to make another groove in it. Come on, me. Stop doing that stuff. Oh, wrong spot. Let's use this screwdriver. That's a little bit longer at least. Okay. And as usual, the only way to get it to work is to make the hole bigger. That's the story of my life. Just kidding, guys. Okay, so we're turning the screw, we're turning the screw, we're turning the screw, and the screw is out. Oh yeah, we got it through the hole. Now that it's out, we can notice that it's almost quite straight up. Now we can do it. Now, just mark my words, guys, this may not work. We may have to go back and do a different method. And that's fine. I, it's not a problem if we have to do a different method. Be nice to the splines on these cheap 5 gram servos. They're not super robust. Okay. Do so you guys see where we're going with this? Now I just need to make my adjustments in here. So we'll pop that off and we'll do our trim adjustments. And we want those trim adjustments to go up there. Oh, that son of a gun. Holding it tight. Tighter this time. That trim adjustment is maybe a little on the small side. Oh, by the way, trim adjustments are a great time to make up for in disparity in your folding of other areas. Might as well take advantage, you know what I mean, Gene? So hold it tight there. Grab it, twist it. Now you'll notice that I'm folding these up into the top of the plane, which is going to make it a bear cat to adjust. But you know what's right below this? The rudder linkage. So you don't really have a choice. So let's not pretend like we do. those things squared up nicely. They're most definitely not square right now. They weren't square to begin with here. There is a method you can use to square these and we may end up having to use that but keeping in mind that when this moves we need them to have some freedom from one another. And we don't want it to do that. Sometimes if you have too much room right here you have to fill that in with something to prevent that from being able to slip off the control arm there. See what I just did there guys? That makes it nice and tight. Toit like a toyga. It's gonna be good. Okay, just a little bit of foldage here. Oh, oh look at that, Airbus A320. The flat video series on that was longer, I think, than this. But it was also far more complex and very scary for me. That's a pretty sweet plane still. 
I just need to fix, fix it finally someday. Just have other projects going on, guys. I had somebody who wanted me to work on the ASH 26. And, um, the other day, he had made a comment about quit working on the UMX, you know, do that instead. And I just don't want you guys to think that I'm going to give up on the ASH 26. I'm not at all. I'm just busy with this right this second. I never really like these little UMX planes. When I can get what I want on them, I like them a lot. I just dropped a screw. I got to pick it up. So lucky. That was a bad idea to have that there in the first place. I'm going to intelligently put it over here. And then I'll be like, what the heck? I left it on the screwdriver. I'll be searching for hours in just mere moments. All right, I'm afraid to run this yet. Maybe that way. Because I don't want it to jab into the foam. But pretty much, this is the time when I have to figure out my system for attaching this to that. And this is a tricky time. Because here's the thing, guys. Let's think about this out loud. Suppose you were in this. Okay, as you move, you see the angle is going to change very slightly. So really, you're stuck with an option of like rolling that around. Making basically a, a small eyelet. Oh, and I need to lift these so I can collapse the flaps. But you see what I'm saying, though? That becomes your like best option. But you see the angle changes as it moves. So then the other option becomes, do we allow this to be bent a little bit maybe to accommodate for that? And once you start bending these things, they stop working pretty quick. <clears throat> and I'm just thinking what I can do to test it. Because I need to come up with a good test. If a guy were motivated, he could do a little something like this, but I think that's going to give you too much slop. This is a challenge that I knew I would eventually face. I just hadn't thought about it yet because I haven't been there yet. Now we need to tape these flaps in the closed position. Let's just get on with it, Brian. Both sides. So we need to make two. And we need to tape the flaps down, okay? Down yonder. Okay, just like that. Give yourself a tail so you can get at it easily, okay? Do it on the back side here. We're gonna flip this, flip this up. Tape that right into the home position, guys. Make nice and secure. Have a secure. All right, so we got it in there. I'm sticking this battery back into its home because I don't like it when my batteries come free like that. That's not generally a good idea. Have the batteries flopping around. Bad things happen when batteries flop. They should make a PSA about that. Okay. See that play there? We have to work that out, guys. That play is still ticking me off. We'll come back to you, play. All right, so you can see about where those linkage arms are. I just got to do it, guys. I just got to mark it. I just got to mark it and do it. Now this is where I have to have the finest tipped, that's probably still a little bit bigger yet. Go straight to a 90 degree angle. That's not what I'm actually after. Want it to be squarer than that. Bam. 
Back you go. You see what I'm doing? I'm making a square. Oh, you son of a slipper. See, now I've got it in a square, and when we're ready, we can squish the square into a tighter connection point. But at this point, pretty sure we're not going to need that extra length. And it scares me to do it, but i got to cut it off. Because I don't want to deal with it anymore. We may have to trim this again anyway after we push it through. Okay, so now the same scenario, except this one appears to be at a slightly different position. Just going to the opposite side here. Now you don't have to do this as a square. You can do this as a triangle or whatever shape you can get away with. It's probably going to be three or four sides at least. If you do it as like a half round or whatever, you might have trouble closing it later. See? See how nice that closes? Okay, so let's cut this off too. Isn't that tool piece of crap, guys? Most vibrating piece of junk. It works. What can I say? Okay. Way too much play here. It absolutely will have to be tighter than that. Let me see what happens when you squish these. It's going to tighten down nicely. And you can make it into a triangle. It's just a lot harder to do this once you get it in the plane, so I'm doing it up here. And sometimes this is where it's nice to work with a, a pair of pliers with some texture to them, because they'll hang on to the component a little bit better. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. One more, one more spot. Okay, so there's the potential mechanism. Let's see if it'll work. We're gonna go to the middle setting on our flaps that's the middle setting. Remember that's almost vertical is where it's supposed to be. Obviously we'll do something about that position in just mere moments. Okay, we're waiting, we're wait we're dealing with the weight of the flaps here. The weight of the fuselage falling on there. What am I doing wrong here? What did I just not do right? I just did something and it's, it doesn't seem like it worked well. Oh, they're taped in position. Duh. Okay. It's like, why is it so stiff all of a sudden? That's what she said. Okay. Here we go. This one side is going to be a pain, I can tell. It's always going to be a pain because we've got the fuselage sitting on... The weight of the aircraft is actually sitting on the flaps right now. 
Let's just test. <laughs> that worked super horrible. <laughs> like, it was more than just a little bad. It was horrible. So we got to do at least one more rotation here. No. We're going to try using this adjustment to a certain extent. Even they're going to end up using quite a bit of it. Because if we try to untwist that or whatever, it's just going to make it super weak. Okay, so now we have to do something to keep this from slipping down. Or it's just going to never work, okay? The other thing is, I'm wondering if I could just go this way. It's almost like I made it the wrong direction. Which is totally weird. Because... No, I didn't make it the wrong way. I made it the right way. Just a little annoying differentiation. Okay. So now I need to do something to keep it from slipping down. So there's a million ways to skin that cat. What I might do right now... Mm, would be... Maybe some heat shrink? For now? Until we have a chance to do something better. And when I say heat shrink, you're probably thinking, well... What the heck? That ain't going to be enough. Well, not one piece. Might be one piece to begin with, but that might just give us somewhere for the glue to sit. And all we're going to do is we're going to just use that as a brace to hold up our, our mechanism. So then we need fire. And then I need some... Oh, I'm going to get my good burning knife. Did you guys see that? Stop it! Oh, come on. I had problems with that one the last last video. And then I had problems with this one, too. Okay, guys. Okay, so we're just doing um, the one on that side, and then now I just got to figure out where the heck the rest of it rolled. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us something to build upon. So let me find my heat shrink now. Okay, so I found my heat shrink. So it's always a good idea to use materials that you can slip off if you're doing a kind of a prototype here. And, uh, of course, yours won't be a prototype because you can copy mine. Okay. So now we'll cut a second piece. Thusly. We'll slip that right over. And slip that right over. Exact same process as the first stage. Just make sure you get it to about the same depth. Okay. I knew that this plane would be a whole lot more challenging than the uh, the Cessna 182 UMX, but it has proven to be a lot harder in several different ways, and that's and that's not really a big deal. I mean, it's it just is what it is, but it's just surprising to me how much harder they can be from one another. Seems like they should be about the same difficulty, but that's probably foolish. Okay. All right, cool. So now 
We're about ready to run out of memory, guys. Don't worry, I'm not going to bail on you. This project will definitely be filmed for your viewing pleasure. Um, we're in the middle position. Slip it right there. Some middle position. Oh, for God's sake, it's so frustrating every time I let go of the plane falls, falls on itself. Okay, so now this is where it pops off really quick. So it's the first time, you've seen it for the first time move. Now I just got to work out the details. I'm probably just going to have to put a little drip of CA or something on there to keep them on there. But for now, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Come back for more.